Just occasionally, all the planets align. And it seems as though, for me, they just have. Because today <laughs> is my birthday, and it's a big one. And it's also the launch of a brand new rifle from one of my favourite manufacturers. <laughs> and welcome to AAR On Air and this week is a very special program because today I get to release, test and review the brand new BSA R12 CLX Pro and what an amazing rifle this is. This has been quite a while in the making and testing and being involved, even in a very small part, is a huge privilege and honour for me and the guys at Vector Air. But what a secret to keep and now it's out the bag. And I think a bit of a montage is in order really. is number one of the new side lever 12 round walnut Minelli stocked all new rifle from BSA that has made in Birmingham written on the side. Note I said made in, not thought about, conceived in, born in or some other such phrase but then built somewhere else altogether. No, it has been all of those thought about, conceived, born and made here in Great Britain by a company that's origins are over 160 years old and they are in part responsible why you still have a democracy and freedoms you may not have had if they hadn't have made the sacrifices that they did. Naturally, they've kept this traditional style rifle close to the R10 in looks, but look closer and you will soon see this isn't some facelift get rid of the old parts update. It is all new and built around the new CLX block. Indeed, to give this its correct title, it is the BSA R12 CLX Pro Regulated. Personally, I think there should be the word gorgeous in that title as well. But hey, I'm just a drooling fan who's been shooting this now for a number of weeks and I haven't stopped grinning yet. Let's do the walk around, shall we? And put some statistics into the narrative. This is the .22 calibre version and there will initially be this and the 177 calibres at launch. This is the carbine version and is 102.5 centimetres long, which is just over 40 and a quarter inches. It tips the scale at 3.46 kilograms, which is around 7 pounds 10 ounces. Of course, that figure is unscoped, which isn't heavy for something that is made from quality materials and sporting a 288cc bottle on the front which is going to help maximise your shot count and should be good for 250 shots in 177 and 280 in 22. From this carbine version, you will get a little less from the super carbine at 190 and 260 shots for the 177 and 22 respectively. From the front then, there is a shrouded and silenced 15 inch or around 38 centimetre long cold hammer forged barrel that is responsible for the superb accuracy from this R12 carbine, all done with a minimum of audible interference. The super carbine is a little shorter in the barrel at 13 and a half inches or a little over 34 centimetres. Below this is the aluminium bottle in a high gloss black finish. This emerges from the dark stained front of the all new walnut Manelli stock in a purposely designed manner, creating a blend of the dark material 
into the natural individual material of the stock. This is a totally new design stock that holds true to its forerunner's thumbhole DNA, but very much stamps its own individuality on the family's name and ethos. The stippling on the forestock is graded in depth and is finished to the highest of standards. This blending of stippling carries over to the grip with a familiar embossed M. The darker wood finish also reappears at the bottom of the grip to match that front. The thumb hole cutout is there and beautifully finished. An adjustable black rubberized cheek piece is built into the stock and fully adjustable butt pad. And when I say fully adjustable, I mean fully adjustable. These have got to guarantee a perfect scope eye alignment for the fussiest of shooters. There are sling studs factory fitted to the underside to save you fitting them and running the risk of damaging that stock. On the underside is the oversized gauge or manometer which is very clear and colour coded red, amber, green. The green tips into the red at the by now well-known BSA maximum of 232 bar. And because this is regulated, BSA state that you can go to this level of fill pressure in both sub-12 and FAC versions. There is a rather natty little dust cover for the filler port, which is magnetic and also frames that oversized gauge, finishing the whole thing off nicely. This is removable, which means it is possible to lose it, but it is flush fitting, so you'd either need to forget to put it back on or be pretty unlucky to lose it. Before we move up to the top of the rifle, let's just take a second and look at that trigger. This is one of the nicest triggers I've used and so very adjustable. The angle of the blade, the positioning forwards or backward, then the pressure adjustments. It is naturally a two stage item with a slightly longer first stage followed by a nice crisp release on the second stage. Right. Up to the top, the first thing you notice is a move to a side lever action, which is biathlon style. The thing to point out here is this is often where you can tell the price of a gun. You see, I've tried many of these in my time and some are smoother than others. A cheap gun will be notchy and an expensive gun will be a heck of a lot smoother. The only point to make here is this is about the smoothest I can ever remember using. It is like a silk scarf sliding off a highly polished car. You know, if you were blindfolded and allowed to use that side action, you would expect a two and a half to three thousand pound rifle was in your hands when the blindfold was removed. This really is the quality other manufacturers should be aiming to achieve and has maybe raised the bar considerably. When fully pulled back, there is that simple and super crisp click and that's it. Then it's just smoothly back into the home position. Now I love the super smooth bolt action of the old R10, but this is on a whole new level. The magazine on this is a 12 round item as the name would suggest, and it carries the usual BSA colour coding of red for 22 and blue for 177. There is a small window facing the shooter to tell them how many rounds are left in the magazine. Now, loading this is very simple. I like simple because usually it means reliable. And this is the same magazine as my 160 CLX, and I've had no problems with that at all. To load, simply drop your pellet in, head first, rotate, press in the next one, rotate, press in the next one. It won't fall back once you've got the pellets in. And of course it gives you the indicator to tell you how many you have left. It is magnetic and once you're all loaded up, returning it to the left hand side of the rifle will be met with a magnetic attraction for the latter part. 
ensuring it's accepted in the right position. Again, the word is smooth. The safety is now on the rear of the block rather than the side. This is a rocker and has a clever little twist to it. Apart from the usual red indicator for fire, you see, dropping this into safe will give you an audible click. But when you drop it into fire, the feel of the click action is there, but it's much quieter, which means no scaring off your quarry in the dead of night with a loud click. Safe, fire. Safe, fire. The scope rail on the top is the usual BSA dovetail and demands finishing off with a quality scope. That pretty much finishes off the walk around, but in itself doesn't tell the full story of just how comfortable this R12 is to hold and use, how balanced it is, and the feeling that all the points mentioned above when put together make this gun much more than the sum of its parts. It is a joy to simply hold and will keep you wanting to keep shooting for hours on end. Now let's just take a look at the power levels of this 2.2 calibre, shall we? Well, using the BSA Gold Stars at 14.66 grain, it saw 595 feet per second, which is a healthy 11.53 foot-pounds or 15.63 joules. This leaves enough of a gap to 12 foot-pounds in case you're going to use some heavier pellets. Naturally, the R stands for regulated. So what's the feet per second spread looking like? Well, a full magazine of unweighed pellets saw 7 feet per second spread, which is pretty tight. Time to get this fitted out with a scope and out on the range at 40 metres. Here goes. BSA R12 CLX Pro regulated, beautiful, fabulously made. The feel of it is incredible. The ergonomics of this grip and the whole stock is beautiful. It's really been well thought out. They've got the heads together with Minelli to come up with this. Minelli don't just do it, it works together. They've made a fabulous, fabulous job of it. It's using that CLX block. The side lever is silky, silky smooth. I've just put a scope on it. I'm about to give it a go. It's a 2-2. If I was target working, I'd want a 177. This is it. This is the only one at the time of going to filming. It's a 2-2. And so far that I've used it, I have been so pleased with the results. So let's give it another go, shall we? Out at 40 metres in the wind. Same hole. Yeah, that's it. End of it. One of the interesting features on this is you've got a white indicator on the side. Now I know when they first brought out the CLX and, and I've got the 160 version, the shorter one. They didn't put this on initially and before the launch they actually went back and added this feature so if it's white you're unloaded pull it back and cock it it turns red so at the 
just at a glance you can see whether it's live or not as well as the fact you can actually see what you've got left in your magazine because it rotates and counts down as well some nice subtle little features on this they really have got this so right but hey with all the experience that these guys have got in building guns i am not surprised you know i'd like to just say one thing to the guys at bsa not a lot of people realize or know that when i first bought my bsa r10 which was some years ago i was so pleased with it i actually put pen to paper and wrote to BSA to say thank you for doing such a wonderful job on that gun. I've never had a problem with it, never had an issue, and it is always accurate. It's one of, it's not one of, it's probably the most uh, accurate gun that I currently own. And I've got one message really to say to the guys at BSA. You know, if you're watching this, you should be so proud at what you guys have put together and what you're putting out because this is a work of art this is a joy for a shooter to use be proud be very proud thank you so much guys thank you well cold hammer forge barrel does it again and i can't say that i'm surprised as i said earlier i've had this for a few weeks and i've had even better results when there isn't the pressure of a camera rolling it even had the guys from Vector Air out on the range with it, and the results were always consistent, with the key words being accurate and quality. You know, there are a lot of well-established companies out there who are maybe not as old as BSA, who are just sat on their laurels producing the same old guns. Not so at BSA. They make some excellent rifles and yet they're still working hard in the R&D department making sure they don't go stale. I'm sure I've said it before about the Porsche and the 911. It's been around for years but each new model is very different from the old one with a host of improvements and better performance. But it keeps that hint of the beautiful shape that a 911 is known for. Well, this R12 has deliberately kept the R10 silhouette, but then you look closer. It feels like the R12 has done something I didn't think was possible. It stepped up a gear or two and oozes quality. In this price range, I don't think there's an awful lot to compete with it. How much is all this newness going to cost? Well, this is going to set you back about £1,215 UK for this beautiful walnut version and the stunning black pepper laminate will cost you an extra £50 at £1,265 UK. And believe me, I feel we're talking value for money. Not within everyone's reach, I understand, but a lot more affordable than some other guns striving to achieve this level of quality maybe falling a little short. I just know someone is going to ask me if I'm going to sell my BSA R10 to buy one of these new R12s. I can just hear it now. And the answer is no. I won't be selling my R10 to buy one of these R12s. But I may well be selling some of my other rifles for when I do buy one of these and I will be getting one. I admitted at the start of this review that I am a fan of BSA rifles, but I also feel qualified to say I've tried a lot of rifles in my time and this one is right up at the top of that list for quality, desirability, usability, accuracy and yes, value for money. I would have thought this has got to be in the running for the best UK air rifle of the year. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at the new R12 from BSA. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe. Feel free to share this program. Click the notification bell to be reminded when new programs are released. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Join in the chats on these forums and the AAR website. A big thank you to BSA for the loan of this gun, which sadly needs to go back. I don't even think my best please face will prevent that from happening. And of course, a big thank you to the guys at Vector Air for their help and input as well. 
The biggest thanks goes, as always, to you guys for watching. Please stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully I'll see you at the usual time next week. Oh, bye for now. Wow.